So today we are out in the field. We have this lovely pivot. This is a big one that's on one of our hay fields. And we were trying to flush it and get it ready to go to turn it on because we run manure water through this pivot. And we were flushing it and there's a crack. So, <laughs> turned it on, it was just spraying water out like crazy. And uh, yeah, there's a pretty good crack right there. There's also a little bit of a crack. I can see it's kind of leaking right there. This is all clear full of water, so Christopher's gonna pop the plug over here. And we're gonna let the water out. We almost got the truck stuck right there. We were trying to pull up. <laughs> eh, it sunk pretty good because flushing this out. So we're gonna try and clean it up and weld it up. Yeah, we gotta grind it a little bit. We're gonna put a jack on it and lift it up a little. And then we got some boards we'll shove underneath it, but I'm gonna try and weld that up. Our, the guy we usually have come weld is not here. So I'm gonna do my best. Over here on our repair truck, we have a stick welder, all these cords here, but that is thin metal and I would just burn big holes. We also have a MIG spool gun that's in here. Actually, it's up here, but yeah, we're gonna use the spool gun. We don't use it very often. It does work. It's just not quite as good as a straight up MIG welder. But we're gonna get it out and see if we can uh, get it working because I will do a much better job with that than I would a stick welder. So for those of you who don't know, this is a spool gun. So it's got all your cables for gas and electric. And then your wire is just right here on the gun. So it only has to pull it from there right at the end so you're not trying to push wire all the way through so that's a spool gun have a little bit of wire in there you can't oh there you can see it so we're gonna be using this to weld it up Christopher came and ground it down now this is the other side this was not the side that was leaking out but there's you start grinding and there's a nice crack right there so it's really thin i'm gonna do we're just gonna try and get it welded up to where we can make it through this year and then we're gonna just have to replace all this but we need to get watering so we can't really replace it all right now because we need to turn the water on today all right finally got the spool gun set correctly now Taryn's down there welding on the pipe I can only watch him through the camera so it doesn't burn my eyes Now we can all rate him on how good of a job he does welding. Well, it looks like chicken scratch, but it'll work. <laughs> right, well, this side, the hole is sealed. It doesn't look good, but uh, it's harder than it looks to weld with this pool gun, mainly because the metal is really thin and it doesn't like to be set on really low temperatures and low speed. So it's really finicky, but it will seal the hole, at least for this year. Okay, Chris, Christopher is going to start on this side. I've had two knee surgeries in the past and it really hurts for me to kneel down. So he's gonna kneel down and see if he can get it going. I think I finally, after all the chicken scratch on the other side, I finally may have gotten this welder set, kind of. If I could see out of the glass, it'd be awesome. Yeah, this welding helmet just gets kicked around in our in our service truck and you can barely see through it so we're doing our best here with what we've got it would be nice to get some new equipment for welding honestly i can't with, with the sun on this side i can't i can't see the hole yeah it is hard to see Get rid of this crap we don't need. Just don't break it. Because we can replace the screens. We just need to we need to put new screens on this one. I'm not gonna break it. I'm just gonna take this safety screen. Whatever. Oh, now you've done it. <laughs> just go 
we'll be able to see if we do this. Just don't drop the helmet on the ground. See, that's what we were trying to look through. And then there's a there's a shield on the inside. This little shield. That's just as bad. So we'll need to replace these two screens. But at least now we'll be able to see a little bit better. Night day difference, huh? Dark this side has a <clears throat> this side's crack is really big. And it's cracked on top and bottom of the weld, so the other side is just a little tiny crack. But the metal is just so thin. Okay. Got that one finished. Looks a lot better than the other side. It helps when you're uh, when your gun's set right. And you're more experienced welder. <laughs> I don't know that you're more experienced than me. Hey, I've been doing it for longer than you. I've just done more. Um, we did put boards underneath the end, so I think that's the main problem is it had, well, first off, it was rusted on the inside really thin, but it had the whole weight of this full of water pulling down on it. So it was kind of just ripping versus just cracked. So now that it's supported, it shouldn't have that weight on it. So ideally it'll make it through the rest of the year. Now we just have to put everything away and flush this pivot so it's ready to go. All right, we hit the switch. They're starting to turn on. Let's check our uh, welds and see if they're leaking. No leaks on this side. So even though it looks like chicken scratch, it's holding. The little drips you're seeing are coming from up here. I got one little pinhole on this side. Let's see how, how the side Christopher did looks. Got a pinhole up here on the left, top left. A little bit squirting out right there. Hmm, I, I guess you're not as experienced. <laughs> just kidding. It's hard to get all the little holes. I'm surprised the other side isn't leaking because it's just chicken scratch. <laughs> as it gets more pressure, it could get more holes, but we'll, uh, the little holes should seal up. I mean, it's a metal pipe. It's got water in it. It's going to rust. It'll rust full or get a little bit of junk in there. I'm not so worried about little holes. The nozzles in the pit, in the, in the sprinkler drops are bigger than some of these holes. So it's not going to cut any pressure by having a few little holes here. Yeah. So what we're waiting for is down there and you probably won't be able to see it because there's kind of a hill and now there's all the spray, but we have the end plug off way at the very, very end. And it's got to blow that out because it's oh there i can see it i don't know if you can see it there's a brown stream right at the very end that's about as big as your arm it's just flushing out water all the sediment and stuff that's settled in this big pipe all the way down is what's getting flushed out so run it and it actually looks like it's running clear right now so we're going to shut it off go put the end cap in and then we'll uh turn it on and get it going the dairy wants to pump their lagoon water through here. They're getting pretty desperate. It's a mess out there. So we want to get this pivot going. We might have to clean a few of these drops out too once we get it going. Oh, we're just driving through the field and these pivot tracks are awful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But we've got some Galileo wheels and uh, tires that we're going to try out. And uh, they're, they're kind of like, they act like a track and uh yeah we're gonna try them on a couple of our pivots that sometimes get stuck and make big, rut, big ruts like these and see how they do so we'll be making that video a little bit later when we uh get af after we're done planting spuds so look forward to that this is the the, the clean out plug oh man it's good kind of a muddy mess trying to get over here but we pulled that out to clean it and that was and when I pulled it out, that was packed clear full of mud right there. So you have to pull that out every spring to drain it and to flush it out. So we just gotta put the plug back in and then we can turn this pivot on. This pivot is really old. It's a Zomatic pivot. We converted it over to a Ranky system because we like the Ranky system better, but 
it uh, it is old. This pivot is probably 40 or 50 years old, so we got to put the plug in. The plug is just a big metal cap with a clamp on it. completely full of mud so yeah if you don't flush it you're gonna end up plugging up all your nozzles and everything <clears throat> and we're still gonna have we're still gonna have these nozzles that are that are plugged but there's just a, a little hole in there on the on these end ones that's a pretty big hole in the end of this nozzle in here so these end ones don't usually plug up but near the very very front they get smaller as it goes in so you have consistent flow because out here the pivot moves really fast so you need bigger bigger nozzles in there it moves slower so you need smaller nozzles so you get the same amount of water on the ground throughout the whole pivot but the smaller nozzles on the inside is usually what plugs up and because this pivot is so old there's lots of little chunks of rust that'll fall in and those will restrict the flow and then when we put the manure water through it builds up on that rust and just plugs the nozzle off so we only we have to clean it a little bit. This is one pivot. We have 34 pivots to run this year. So we do a lot of servicing, changing tires, gearboxes, everything, and trying to keep them all running. That's gonna be a big job this year because we're renting a bunch of ground this year. I think we got I think we got like 15 or so more pivots this year than last year. So it'll be quite a job. We actually have another pivot that we need to move. So we're gonna get in the truck and we're gonna go and move a pivot so our dad can uh, finish chisel plowing. Yeah, chisel plowing. I couldn't remember what he was doing. He's in the tractor. He's been in the tractor for like a month and he's gonna be in the tractor for probably a, probably a few more weeks till we're done planting potatoes. So this pivot here is the one we need to get moving. It says there's power to it uh, because this one has moved out of the way and he's over there in the tractor. Uh, we're just, we need to move this one out so he can work this road up and work up where the pivot's sitting. This will all be planted into potatoes. So we're going to see if we can get this pivot going. Or at least not flushed, but moved out of the way. One is also an old Zomatic pivot. This is one of the only ones that we have not converted to Ranky. Is, is, this, is this the only one? I feel like it is the only one that we haven't converted. Yeah, this I is think, the only one. Yeah, this all, is of one. Our, all of our other pivots we've converted to the Ranky system. Um, so this is the last one and we'll probably be converting it shortly in the next couple years at least It is pretty it, it's fairly straightforward to run though. So it's not that bad. We have some that are a lot uh, a lot more difficult but This one's pretty easy. We do have Not putting it on now, but We have a whole new sprinkler package. So we're gonna be replacing all of these nozzles on this one for the whole pivot so we have to do that every so often I think you're supposed to do it about every seven or eight years because the nozzles slowly get bigger and bigger as the silt and stuff from the water flow through it so you have to change the sprinkler packages so every seven or eight years you got to go through and swap them all out and it's time for this one to be swapped this is the inside of the panel christopher's just going to tighten up a few things to try and get power going to it It's usually when I go, yeah! I'm scared the crap out of them. <laughs> Luckily, I know there, there's no power here. <laughs> I mean, I have the power shut off. Yeah, power's turned off. As long as you don't touch those lines right there that are coming in, those have power. Well, he's over there trying to get something going. It, we cannot get it to the direction selector will not click and activate. So we're probably gonna have to have an electrician come out and figure this out. Maybe the switch is bad, I don't know. We're not, we're not quite sure what's wrong with it, but we can't get it going. So we'll have to have an electrician come out. This is another pivot we are running this year. And this field we have to, we're gonna be planting it north and south but the pivot is over here. So we just turned it on. You can kind of see the tires moving a little bit. 
they moved really slow but it is moving now we got to put the pivot this way so when we come in with the chisel plow and work it this way the pivot's not in the way it'd be in the way on this side so run the pivot this way the other pivots already lined up right there next to the road there's a pivot right over there it's already lined up next to the road so we don't have to worry about that one but this will be the next field that gets worked up so we got to get this pivot moving luckily this is a newer pivot it has a nice ranky panel with the with the screen and it actually works so we'll get it moved never seen a pivot and don't know how it works there is a motor center gearbox right here and then each tire has a gearbox on it and there's a shaft that runs from the center gearbox both directions to the gearbox on the end so just slowly turns them and they just move along the field and there's sensors to make sure it stays in line if it gets out of line it stops all right well i hope you uh, enjoyed that little pivot adventure we have lots of those so <laughs> look forward to that it seems like that's one of the biggest things we do during the summer is just fix broken pivots so we're going to call that uh, the end of the video and you go and have a good day and we'll see you in the next one see ya